Okay, uh, we'll now be looking at uh, adjustment. We've done the first part of the trading profit and loss. That one didn't involve any adjustments. What do I mean by adjustments? Now, the trading profit and loss account, just as I told you, is usually for one year. Now, there are some income and expenses that are for that particular year or for the previous year before the current year or for the next accounting period after the current year. Now, since, as I told you, the trading profit and loss account is for the what? Current accounting period. You will need to what? Cut off those income and expenses meant for the next period or for the period uh, for the previous period in order to find the actual amount for the current period. So that is where adjustment comes in. Like let's start for instance, the first adjustment, depreciation. Asset, when you continue to use assets, definitely it will be depreciated like the board. You can't expect this board by two years' time to still be like this. It would have gone through what is called depreciation. That is the wear, wear and tear, or reduction in value of this board. And if you bought it now, let's say 5,000 or 7,000, next two years, you don't expect that this same board will be the same amount. Because what? The value would have what? Depreciated. Maybe that time, it may be going for only 1,000 or 1,500 or something like that. Now, that depreciation of assets is usually recorded on the debit side of the profit and loss account. Debit side of the profit and loss account section. You know, the trading profit or loss account has two sections, just as I showed you. Trading section stops at gross profit or loss, while the second section, profit and loss account, or profit or loss account, stops at the net profit or loss part. So, depreciation of assets, maybe at times they may charge 5% depreciation or reducing balance, they will still treat that one as a topic on its own. Then, drawings. There are two types of drawings. There is drawings in cash and there is drawings in goods. Now, that word drawings, is a it has a technical meaning in accounting. What do I mean? Drawings is used when the owner of business withdraws either cash or goods of the business for his own personal use. Let me repeat. Drawings is a technical term used when the owner of the business withdraws either cash or goods for his own personal use. So not for the business use, but for his own personal use. So this cash drawings is always deducted from capital in the word balance sheet, which we will still look at. Then this goods is always deducted, drawings in goods is always deducted from purchases in the trading account session. Then accrued and prepaid income. Now, when income is due for collection by the, uh, by the business, but it doesn't be collected as of the current accounting year. Let me repeat. Income due to what? To the business. But it hasn't been collected or the business has not collected it. As of the current accounting period, it is accrued income. But income that is not yet due to the business. Let me repeat. Income that is not yet due to the business. But the business has received it in advance. Maybe the income, let's say for instance, the current period is 2020. But the business has collected some income due to it in 2021. That income is known as prepaid income. So this accrued, this prepaid income, it will be deducted. That amount meant for the next period. It will be deducted from the total to get the amount for the current accounting period. Because trading profit and loss always involve the current accounting period. While this one that has been due but hasn't been collected, it will be added. You see the difference? So let's go to the next one. Accrued and prepaid expenses. Just as in this case, accrued expenses is expenses you are supposed to have made that is due for payment, but you have not yet paid it 
that expense is accrued. But prepared expenses is expenses for the next accounting year. But what? You have paid it in advance. You have paid expenses in the advance. That is prepaid expenses. This one is always deducted. This one added. Then bad debt and provision for doubtful debt. Now, the debt of balance in the balance sheet, which you will still look at, there is difference between these two. They are related to debtors. Now, that debt of balance you have in your balance sheet, which you will still look at, if you are very sure, remember, I said very, very sure, that that money is not, you can't collect that amount somebody is owing you. That is the debt of balance, you can't collect it. That figure is known as bad debt. That means incollect, irrecoverable debt. You can't collect it. Imagine somebody owing you for 10 years. It's as good as what? Being written off as a bad debt. But provision for doubtful debt, even from the name, doubtful. You are sure, you are not sure. You may or may not collect. But this one, you are very sure that you are no more collecting. That is why they call it bad debt. But this one, you have double mind. You are sure, you are not sure. So, accounting being a conservative profession brought out what is called provision for doubtful debt. What is, the, uh, what is the essence of this provision for that? Since you are not sure whether you will collect or you will not collect, accounting tend to understate profit or your income. They don't like overstating your profit. So that uh, people will have a wrong impression or perception of the business that is making profit more than as it's supposed to be. So they tend to understate income and profit. That is why they brought that what is called provision for doubtful debt. So it's just a provision of, okay, we are not yet sure, we are sure. Okay, we will deduct this from this. So now, what usually happens is, if you have these two, this one is usually deducted first, so that you are sure of the debt. Maybe debt to us is 15,000, this one is 5,000. You deduct 5,000 from 15,000, that is what? 10,000. That means that 10,000 is the figure you are very, very sure that what you may collect. Now, out of that 10,000, you may not still be sure of some. That is where you now do what? Minusing or provision for discount, doubtful debts. Then, out of that, there's what is called provision for discount. You may provide discount for debtors because you are not sure also. So, to encourage them to pay, you brought out what is called provision for discount on debtors. Now, provision for discount on creditors, the same thing. is usually, at, but the only difference, this one is for debtors, this one is for creditors. Okay, now we're going to look at an uh, illustration on adjustment involving what? Uh, the adjustment involving traded and profit and loss account. Now, let's look at the first one. Write out the ledger account of Mr. Kayobe as of 31st December 1996, showing the transfer to the what? Final account. He earned what? Commission from where? Sales for the year. 31st December. Commission from sales. That is an income account. So commission receivable. Receivable account. How much? 8,000. He earned commission for the year 1996. 38,500. Owing as at 31st December 1995, 800. Then owing as at 31st December 1996, 1,450. Now, before we make any recordings, Owing, income owing or accrued, as they said, or accrued as we wrote, accrued or owing. That is income due to the business. But what? It hasn't been received by the business. Now, is this an asset or liability? What is an asset? What is a liability? Asset is resources the business owns. But liability are resources 
are obligations the business have. So looking at that definition, is this an obligation, income accrued? No. It is what? Resources the business. Even though he hasn't collected it, it's still a resource to the business. The business can still make use of it later, even though it's not in his uh, possession presently. So this is an income. And this is an asset. Let me repeat. Income accrued is an asset. But income prepaid or income in advance, as they call it, is a liability. So that's the first thing you should take note of. I remember when we were doing trial balance, we said all assets have a debit balance. Did you remember debit balance? While all liabilities have a what? Credit balance. That means opening balance of an asset will be on the debit side. Opening balance, balance brought forward, will be on the debit side. What closing balance of this income accrued will be on the credit side. So please take note. Asset is an asset. I explain why. You are expecting the income, even though you have not received it, but it is due to you. That is an asset to you, the business. Then it has a debit balance. That means having a debit balance means the opening balance will be on the debit side, while the closing balance will be on the credit side. Then income in advance. That means income that is not yet due to you, but you have collected. That means you have not rendered or provided services for it. This one you have provided services for it, so it is due. Or you have what? Rendered service or provided goods. So it is due to you. That is why it's an asset. But this one, you have not rendered anything. You've not rendered any services, you've not provided any good. But they've paid you in advance. It is a liability to you, the business. So it is a credit balance. What it means is that the opening balance, which is balance brought forward, will be on the credit side. While the closing balance will be on the debit side. So always take note of this. First, before you do anything like this. So let's look at the first one. He earned commission from sales for the year 31st December, 8,500. Now, commission. That means he earned, he received, he received commission from sales. How would that be recorded? It will come under here. Sales, how much? 8,500 because that is an income to you. Commission, extra income. That is why it is recorded 8,500. Now, owings, that is commission that he has earned. That means he has provided services and he is due for uh, commission. As at December 31st, Remember, what is the current year you are dealing on? December, 31st December, 96. But here they are telling you money owed in the previous period, 31st December, 1995, is what? 800 naira. That means in the, as at this date, 95, it was closing balance. But as of 1st of January, 1996, it will be opening balance. Let me repeat. As of 31st December 1995, it was closing. Remember when we were doing our opening and closing in our various ledger. But as of January, 1st January 1996, it will be opening balance. Opening balance, remember, it is owing. It is an accrued owing. Owing income owed or accrued is an asset. And if it's an asset, the opening balance will be on the debit side. So we'll come. Opening balance. How much? 800. So remember again, this is owing as at December 34. As at December 31st, 95, it is closing balance. But on 1st January 1996, it is opening balance. So if as it is, is opening balance, remember. Income accrued is an asset, and if it's an asset, a debit balance. And if it's a debit balance, the opening balance will be on the what? Debit side. 
So that is why we have opening balance here. You can now put the dates. 1st January 1996. To show you this, the opening balance. Then they went further and said, Owing as at December 31st, 1996. That means if this is the opening balance of what? Commission receivable as of 1st January 1996. The closing balance is what? 1450 Now, we said income accrued is an asset, asset and the closing balance must be on the credit side. So definitely this one, remember, this commission receipt is for December that's for, so if this closing balance will be on the opposite side, which is the what? Credit side. How much? That is 31st December 96. How much? Uh, 1,450. Now we'll add up. This plus this zero, plus this five, plus this nine, nine. 9,950. Now, the difference between this and this, we are going to take it to the profit and loss account. So profit and loss account, 9,950 minus this will give you 9,150. So we'll balance it. So that's it. So this amount will be taken to the what? Profit and loss account session. Then the next one, illustration two. Let's look at illustration two. Write up the ledger account. This one is motto expenses. This is an expense. Motto expenses account. Now there is owing here. Owing. Motto expenses. Even from that word, expenses. Expenses owing. And expenses in advance or prepaid. Approved expense. Expenses in advance. That is prepaid expense. Now, it's just opposite of when we're talking about income, what, accrued, and income in advance of prepaid. What this means is that, remember, in the other one, income, income owing, we said it is an asset, but expenses owing is a liability. And if it's a liability, it has a credit balance. What it means is that the opening balance will be on the credit side while the closing balance of income expenses owing will be on the debit side. But expenses in advance is an asset which is a debit balance and the opening balance will be on the debit side because it's an asset, ex expenses in advance. And closing balance will be on the credit side. So take note of all this. These are, if you see questions of this nature, always be noting, is it a liar? And where will the opening balance and the closing balance be? Is it an asset? And where will the opening balance and closing balance be? Now, let's look at the, let's read it up. Write up the ledger account of Okondo as at 31st December 1998. Motto expenses paid for the year, 15,000. Motto expenses owing as at 31st December 97, 3,000. Then motto expenses owing as at 31st December 1998, 2,700. Now let's start with this first one. Motto expenses paid, that means cash has been for the year ended, 15,000. Now, if you remember when we're doing our cash book, I told you when money is being paid out in the cash book, it will be what? Credited. Now, the corresponding entry in the expenses account will be debited. And the corresponding entry in this case is motor expenses. So motor expenses account will be debited for this amount, 15,000. We will now come, we will write cash. How much is the cash paid? 15,000. Now, 
Let's go to the next item. Motor expenses owing at 34th December 1997. Remember, we are dealing with 1998, 31st December 98. So this one, as at December 31st, 97, is closing balance. Then it is carried forward to the pre uh, present year, which is the 1998. It will be the opening balance. And we said, motto expenses owing is an is a, is a liar, liability. Motto expenses owing is a liability. And all liabilities, the opening balance is always on the credit side. And I told you this is the opening balance. It's closing as of 31st December 97, but it's opening as of 1st January 1998. So we'll come, put it here, opening balance, 3,000. Then, let's go to the second one. Motto expenses owing at 31st December 1998, 2,700. What this means is that as of the current year, which is this 31st December 1998, the closing balance or closing amount is what? 2700 And remember, we told you expenses owing is a liar. And a liability, the closing balance will be on the debit side. So since opening balance is here, closing balance of necessity will be here. here. 2700 so we'll add up these two. This is 17,700. Then minus it from this, we'll take it to the profit and loss account, which will give you 14,700. 14, Closing it, this 17,700. So this will be taken to the profit and loss account session. So we'll look at our balance sheets next.